name of Jesus. I don't understand why you even still sitting down. Okay? I don't understand why you still sitting down because this is the foundation of our faith. He has risen on this day. You have been saved from your sins. You have been saved from the wrath of God. We should give God a worthy praise. Let's exalt the name of the Lord. Let's exalt the name of the Lord. He has risen. He has risen. Our king has risen. Guess what? Muhammad is still in the grave. Confucius is still in the grave. Buddha is still in the grave. We serve a risen Savior. Let's exalt the name of the Lord on this day. Let's exalt his holy name. We thank you, Father God. John, Scripture, John 11, 25 says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. Church say resurrection. And the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you today. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, Father God. And we just commemorate and we just uplift the name of Jesus on this day because he has risen, Father God. Jesus traveled through our death that we might live, that we might have access, Father God to the heavens, Father God, and we're just grateful today, Father God. If we do nothing today, Lord God, we're just going to exalt, we're going to uplift, we're going to worship in truth and spirit the name of Jesus, Father God. I just pray that it would resonate with our spirits this morning, Father God. We're not here just to show up on any typical Sunday, Father God, but we're here just to allow you to know how thankful and express our gratitude, Father God, for that we were yet sinners. Christ died for the ungodly, Father God. I pray that you will have your way in this worship service today, Father God. I pray that you will touch lives and transform your people, Father God, in the way that you will have them to go. We pray for the man of God on this morning, Father God, that you would deposit truth, revelation, Father God, that he might preach, teach the unadulterated word of God, Father God. I pray for all the ministries that are serving today. I pray for all the churches that are opened up in the name of Jesus today, Father God, who is declaring a risen Savior. He lives! He lives! He lives. He lives. We thank you right now, Father God, for all that you're doing. And we just give you the word, praise and glory and honor right now, Father God. And the people of God said, amen. Come on, let's clap our hands. Hey. Let's do it. We serve a risen Savior. He reigns forevermore.
and all. Wow, I just saw some people sit down. Nobody should be sitting down on today. Jesus, this is the day that our Lord and Savior got up yeah, yeah, yeah. When, after he died on Calvary for us. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I wouldn't do that for nobody, especially people who don't know me, people who don't deserve it. So I'm going to see every one of y'all get up on y'all feet so we can praise our Lord together.
Come on, somebody ought to be giving God praise today. Come on, on this Resurrection Sunday, somebody ought to be giving God praise today. Oh, man, I'll try it one more time. On this Resurrection Sunday, someone ought to be giving God praise today. Family, this is why we're here. Listen, this is why we're here. This is why we're here. Why? Because he got up. I don't know what you're waiting on today. I don't know if you need anything else, but those three words is enough for me. He, would you look at your name and say, do you have a pulse? Are you breathing today? He got up. Come on and go with me. He got up. Come on, tell somebody he got up. That's the whole reason why we're here. It's because he got up. Should have been dead and gone. That's me, sir. That's my story. But he got up. And I thank God today that he got up. This is Resurrection Sunday. We are yet here because Christ died. Oh, but we can look over the glory because he is risen. Because he got up. Come on and elbow your neighbor and say, I don't know what you waiting on. I don't know what you waiting on. But I thank God for my rebirth. I said, I thank God for new birth. I thank God for new birth. I thank God for revival. I thank God for resurrection. I thank God for restoration. I thank God for rescuing me. My God today. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Amen. Listen. I, it's resurrection Sunday. I, listen, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Don't, don't get it twisted. It, it ain't about fancy suits and dresses. Don't, don't get it twisted. It, it ain't about hooking up with family and eating some soul food. D don't, don't get it twisted. It's not about Easter money. It, it, it's about Jesus. Living Jesus. And because of that, I just believe that because he got up, th that, that our praise ought to be up. So, so, so from, from this moment on, I need you to put your praise in overdrive. I need you to act like it's your birthday. I need you to act like you just graduated. I need you to act like you just got married. I, I need you to meet, amen, the, the emotion. I need you to meet, amen, the atmosphere with the appropriate level because this is the day that our Savior resurrected with all power in his hands. Listen, we got our J-Kids coming up. Amen. Our J-Kids coming up for our Easter presentation. Come on out, J-Kids. Behind door number one. Amen. Just while they're coming up, just look around and tell somebody good morning today. Tell somebody good morning. Good morning. Amen. Some of you have been here since this morning. Our small groups, we had breakfast together. Amen. Now we're about to worship together, get our praise on together. Amen. God be praised for the things he has done. Amen. For the things he has done. Amen. Look at the J kids coming up today. Amen. Come on, y'all. Stand on your feet as they come. Stand on your feet as they come. Amen. We got our J kids and volunteers. They're going to do a presentation. Amen. Let's receive them as they come. of Easter fill our hearts with love. Thinking of the Savior risen and Lord above. Thoughts of resurrection. Where there comes no night. Thoughts of life and light. <laughs> Thoughts of heaven and sunshine. You're right here. Okay. 
thoughts of hope and gladness, thoughts of light and peace, thoughts of joy eternal. Shall not cease. Every time we think of spring, our praise to God we all sh will bring. As for our thanks, we now begin to help him who came to save us from sin. As so, as is for so glad we are know to show, know for sure that Jesus died to make us poor. T, the best part of the story goes, hallelujah, our Lord arrives. Each little blossom seems to say, look up and sing, it's Easter day. R is for rejoice all children everywhere. His love for us, we all can share.
Are you all glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes. Amen. I'm most of all thankful for God's grace. The grace that he continues to place over, not over my life, not only just my life, but all of our lives. And sometimes in that grace, he also has to break us. Whether it's breaking us to promote us, breaking us to build us up, breaking us to put us where he desires for us to be. But guess what? He gives us grace in it when he breaks us. He never just lets us hit the ground. He never just let it destroy us. And it's only because of his grace that we are continuing to stand here today and even give his name glory. Amen? So this song just simply reminds us just how great his grace is.
this day. God, we thank you for your grace. None of us deserve life. None of us are worthy of it. But God, in spite of all of our flaws, all of our mistakes, Father, you sent Jesus to go to Calvary. Father, and that was grace. 
and we thank you for that grace. And because he got up, we can live again. And God will say thank you. Now, God, as we go forth to teach and preach this word, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Y'all keep that same energy. Amen. Keep that same energy. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Gracefully broken. Luke 24. I want to read verse 13 through 23. Then I'm going to let you sit down. I'm going to read verse 28 through 32. It says, Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together all of these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have one, with one another and you are sad? Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day. Let the church say third day. Third day. Since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us when they did not find his body. Say they didn't find it. They came saying that they also had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. You may be seated. Verse 28 says, then they drew near to the village where they were going. Take me down just a little bit. To the village where they were going. And he indicated that he would have gone no further. But they constrained him saying, abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. And now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he broke bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? I know that was a lot today. Typically, we don't like to read that much when we're preaching a sermon, um, just because some people get lost in the, in the conquest. But here it is. They said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? I want to preach from this subject. It was him. It was him. Just three days ago, we looked at the cross. Now, I must review this in case you missed our Good Friday talk. But the cross was an imminent instrument of humiliation and torture for people convicted as enemies of the state or criminals such as thieves. Understand, in the Old Testament, the Jews didn't use a cross but used stoning and hanging from a tree so that the lawbreaker would not rot in public. The Romans also used death on the cross for rebellious slaves and bandits and for political crimes. And during the Roman period, those sentenced to the cross were beaten with leather lashes, which resulted in severe blood loss. The guilty would then carry the upper cross beam to the execution site, where the central state was already set up. Typically, they would have been fastened to the cross beam on the ground with ropes. But to use nails was rare, which shows us the manner of execution and crucifixion that Jesus met. The culprit, while he was hanging on the cross, was also naked. 
Researchers suggest that the knees of the victim were bent up side by side, parallel to the cross beam, and the nail was then driven through the side of the ankles. And this agonizing pain led to suffocation. And family, the cross symbolizes, as one author put it, the glory of the Christian gospel. The fact that through this gruesome death, the debt of sin against us was nailed to the cross. And we, having been crucified with Jesus, have been freed from sin and death and made alive in God. And so, family, the cross is a symbol of Jesus' love and God's power to save. Jesus now, on this third day, has risen from the dead. Y'all don't know when to shout. He's now risen from the dead after suffering and experiencing this gruesome death, this gruesome death at Calvary's cross with nails going in his hands and with nails going in his feet and, and hanging there and, and dying on the cross, bleeding from the crown of his head all the way down his body. Jesus has died and the disciples feel hopeless. They feel hopeless because they thought that Jesus would save himself the way that he has saved so many others. And so here they are. Oh, it's the third day, but yet they come to a place where they recognize that the tomb was empty. And our text picks up with two disciples wrestling uh, with the weekend. Here it is. It's a pivotal question that I must ask as we lift the text today. Was the cross tragedy? Or was the cross triumph? It's a question that we all must grapple with today because as the two walk together, they bounce bewilderment off one another trying to understand what had just happened. That they're trying to understand what had just happened because this was an unusual week of Passover. It was unusual. This wasn't a normal gathering for Israel. So they left and they went back home and they were baffled by the events that had unfolded. How could Jesus die? As they talk about the events, here comes somebody walking up and they didn't know who it was. And I need you to get into the, 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 the shoes or the sandals of these disciples because have you ever been having a conversation with somebody um, and somebody else walk up? Ain't none of their business. But, but they walk up and wanting to put in their two cents. I need you to get into the mind and the emotions of these two disciples. I need, I need you to see what's happening here. They're walking. They're depressed because Jesus has just died. It's three days. No one knows where his body is. Was he really the one we hope um, had come from God? And here's this person walking up and gets into their business. Oh, and here it is. They did not know it was Jesus. The Bible says they were restrained from knowing that it was him, but yet it was him. And I got to say this today that isn't it amazing that these two disciples are walking and they are in agreement, even though they're sad, but they're walking in agreement and Jesus feels welcome enough to walk up and have a conversation with them. Can I say this family? I'm just in this season where I want to make sure that who I'm walking with Jesus feels welcome. I, I don't know who, who needs to hear that today, but, but I can't walk with everybody in this season. I don't mean to be boozy. I don't mean to be bad. I don't mean to be nasty. I don't mean to be mean, but I just can't walk with anybody in this season because I don't know where you're walking from. Oh, but I got to walk with somebody who shared a faith that I share. I got to walk with somebody who experiencing the kind of emotion that I experience when it concerns um, the things of the cross. I got to make sure that who I'm walking with is walking in agreement with me. Because here's what I found out. Sometimes we can be so busy walking with people who made deals with the devil. They were sad. They were sad and Jesus was concerned with their grief. Can I suggest this to you? That Jesus sees our emotions. He comes near us in our grief. And the lesson is compassion. The church should never be too busy to show compassion. I'm trying to do the best I can. Here it is. As they walked, Jesus walked up. Along with them, asked them, he says, what, what y'all talking about? Cleopas says, are you, where you been at? What, 
Where you been at? Are you a stranger around here? Are you not aware at what just happened at Calvary's mountain? Are you not aware that Jesus, this great prophet of God, had come and our rulers and our leaders had just crucified them? Um, where have you been at? Um, and, and here's what's interesting. When they regard Jesus as a prophet, I got a problem with that. Because Jesus was more than a prophet. Which tells me these particular disciples were not numbered in the 12, yet they were followers of him. Perhaps they were the ones that was in the Hosanna crowd just a week sooner, but they were still following Jesus, but they didn't completely understand him. And I want to know, am I by myself in this house today, or if you're watching online today, has Jesus been more to you um, than a prophet? I'm talking to somebody in this room where Jesus has been more than that. Would you look at your name and say, neighbor, he's been more than that he's been a mother he's been a father he's been a sister he's been a brother he's been a lawyer in the courtroom a doctor in the sick room he's been a real estate agent he's been a mortgage lender i know him to be more than that he ain't just no prophet he's more than that oh look at somebody and say he's more than that oh because i'm only preaching to about 16 people this morning i'll make 17 i can look back over my life and really reminisce and thank god that he was more than me was more than me. Uh, he was more than me. Uh, so they're walking, the two, they're walking and they're talking about Jesus and they give us a report of what just had occurred. Um, and they assume that Jesus was just another person who had come up for the Passover is now going back home. They inform them of what their rulers did, but they did not include themselves. Can I go deeper, Glenn? I must wonder at how much of the measure is it between the crucifiers in the crowd Oh, um, and, and those just in the crowd just past Friday. Um, because Luke, nor any other gospels, offer any detail of a brawl at Calvary. None of the gospel writers talk to us about a brawl at Calvary. Here's my question. You would think that there would be some kind of fight. You would think. There'd be some kind of insurrection. You, you, you would think that somebody would have stepped in for Jesus. Uh, because he always stepped up for others. But there's no record of anybody fighting for Jesus. And I got a question. Wh wh where was the Hosanna crowd at? I, I want to know, where, where, where were they at? I, I, got, I got a beef with the text because I, I got to understand that, 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 that Jesus stepped in for me so many times. And neighbor, that's why I praise him the way that I do. You may not praise him the way that I praise him. You may not go for Jesus the way that I go for Jesus. Because what you don't understand and what you might not be aware of is how much and how he has stepped into my life. And so because... He stepped in my life when I didn't have enough money to pay bills. Am I talking to anybody in this room today? Because he stepped in my life when I found myself broke, busted, and disgusted. Because he stepped in my life, I'm going to always put my praise on 10. Is there anybody in this room that don't mind giving God praise because of the way that he stepped in your life? I got, I got, I just got, I got, I praise him the way that I do because watch this. He stepped in for me while folks stepped down. He stepped in for me while folks stepped out. Am I talking to anybody in this room today? Oh, so where was, where was blind by the mayor set? Where, where was the woman with the issue of blood at? Oh, when Jesus was hanging on the cross. And so here are these disciples that walk in and say, no, our rulers and our leaders, oh, they crucified him. Oh, and so here's Jesus. They don't know it's Jesus, but here's Jesus. And here is the tension in the text, Lady Kim Willis. The tension in the text is, watch this, they hoped Jesus was the one. But can I tell you, there's a difference between Hoping Jesus was the one and trusting Jesus is the one. Y'all ready now? Let's go ahead and go for it. So the past 
ten hopes is what disrupts their present faith in the empty tomb. And actually, that's a challenge for us today that we must refute is that we don't ever hope for Jesus to be Jesus. But we trust, regardless of life circumstances and situations, that Jesus will be Jesus. We trust that he's the one. Look at your name and say, he's the one. He's the one. See, some saints are hoping for Jesus to do this, hoping for Jesus to do that. But here's where I am in my faith. I'm trusting Jesus to do this. I'm trusting Jesus to do that. I'm trusting Jesus to make ways out of no ways. I'm trusting him to be him. It's because, it's because of what these two saw on, on Friday that made them sad and suspicious about this season that they're in. Because they are in a season. They're in a season. They're in a season. Because they saw tragedy at the cross instead of triumph. Uh, they saw cross, not crown. Uh, uh, there, there, there's someone in this room who's been in a season, watch this, of seeing your cross the wrong way. You... You've been complaining. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't make all kinds of Facebook posts. You make a post every day. You you make a post on Monday about your cross. You make a post on Tuesday about your cross. You make two posts about it on Wednesday. Come around again Thursday to look at the people in the comments, and then Friday you make a brand new post about your cross. But what you don't understand is that your cross is needed, and it's the prerequisite so you to get your crown. So you gotta stop looking at your cross the wrong way because us that's in the body of Christ, if there is a cross there's going to be a resurrection. Am I talking to anybody in this room before that's ever been in a season of suffering, been in a season of heartache, been in a season of hardship but when you look back over your life my God today, when you look back over your life, my God your good days outweigh your bad days. Do I got anybody in this room that can say God's been good to me? Here's the tension in the text. Uh, they suffering it was an unexpected element in the life of Jesus. His followers did not expect him to suffer. I'm almost done. Almost done. Next time you stand up, you can stay standing. I'm almost done. They didn't expect him to suffer the way that he suffered. And that's us today. Because we have to understand this unexpected element that being believers, we're going to have to suffer. I'll say it again because my mic going in and out. I said, being believers, we are, watch this, called to suffer. But here's a shout. The sufferings of our present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in the end. I got somebody in this room now. And so as the commute ended, I'm moving, I'm moving, Sterling. As the commute ended, the communication didn't. Oh, I'm, I'm really tiptoeing through this text, really, when you get home. The disciples, as they're walking with Jesus, watch this, they ask him, they said, are you a stranger? And they said, well, you, are you not aware of the things that just happened? Jesus says, what things? And so they begin to talk about how he was crucified. And then Jesus opens up their own mind by recounting himself in scripture and saying that everything that has happened, the law of the prophets had already spoke about. So what just happened is actually fulfillment of prophecy. So they're walking and they're having a good time. Isn't it amazing, man, when you're having a good time, time just gets away from you. Like I hope right now, I hope ain't nobody ready to go. <laughs> they're walking and they don't want communication to stop. So they invite Jesus into the house. It was a seven mile journey. Seven is the number of what? Seven mile journey. It took them seven miles to completely understand what was happening. They wanted Jesus to stay a bit. And here's the key. They don't recognize that it's Jesus. Yet, they are warm by his presence. Can I say this? Perhaps the lesson is the ministry of Jesus is just as powerful as the man, Jesus. They urged him to stay. Though he's strange to them, there's something virtuous about his presence that led them to hospitality. That there's something about Jesus and, and this attribute and attitude to characterize 
all the followers of Jesus. I'm about to make somebody mad, but hopefully I can catch you in the shower. Here it is. Ain't nothing more depressing than an unapproachable, pessimistic, negative, and mean Christian. You always got an attitude. You won't, you won't see no optimism in nothing. But you call yourself a follower of Jesus? You sure? Look at your neighbor and say, you sure? Lambert, don't answer that. I don't want to start no fights. While we don't have Jesus with us in the flesh, we do have him in faith. So what this shows is, although they don't recognize Jesus to be Jesus, his ministry is still there. And so while we're on earth as believers, while Jesus is not here in the flesh, his ministry is still here. So that means we should be able to walk up to people. We should be able to interact with people and encounter people and exhibit the same attributes of Jesus. Even though they're confused at the beginning of this journey, it appears that his explanation of himself in the scripture, watch this, move them from confusion to comfort. They say, stay with us. And it was the word of God said about Jesus that moved them from perhaps nudging him away to urging him to stay. Look at your neighbor and say, stay close to Jesus. So when Jesus opened the scriptures, what did he do? He really opened their minds. Because they were blocked, their perceptions was blocked by their grief. But Jesus dealt with their grief in opening up the scriptures. Uh, there are some things, family, that I'm open to now because I've been exposed to the word. I know that's not for everybody. Don't expect it to be. I'm just talking about me. There's some things that I've got a greater perspective of now because I've been open to the word. And so here's Jesus went in, and he went in their house, and watch this, this is crazy, because when he goes in the house, Jesus actually goes from being a guest to being the host. <laughs> How crazy is that? He goes from being a guest to being a host, because the Bible says he took out the bread, and he started breaking bread. Oh, man, but there's so much power. See, I love the Bible. I know this ain't for everybody. I know I got about six people in here that love the Bible. I see two right there. Eh? There go three right there. Here it is. The Bible, every word in the Bible is significant for revelation. So pull it up on the screen. Uh, um, who got it? Pull it up on the screen. I need y'all to see something. Um, which verse am I looking at? I'm, I'm out of here for real after this. I'm really, I'm really out of here after this. Uh, okay, she said take your time. Maybe I will. 30, verse 30, pull it up. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and he gave it to them. Now, when most people read that, they just think Jesus is having some kind of snack, some kind of meal. Not too many people are going to read that and see the whole weekend experience wrapped in one verse. Come, come on, I'm going to get you there. You see, now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to him. Now, Luke does not record this. However, this is not eisegete, but you got to use practicality when reading the word. I can't give you, Courtney, anything, let alone bread, without using my hands. This whole time, they don't know who Jesus is. But the sequence of the narrative suggests that is when he serves them bread, they recognize it's him. There's something about the hands of Jesus that allows their minds and their spirits to recognize that it's him. Can I tell you something? What did they see? They saw the nail scars. 
Uh, can I talk a little bit about the nail scars? See, there's something different about Jesus' hands that are different than mine. In Jesus' hands, there are nail scars in his hands, which will be a reminder of what he went through while he was hanging on the cross. And I wish I had somebody in this room today that can thank God for the nail scars. Because the nail scars are proof that he paid the price for my sins. And is there anybody here that can help me close out this sermon today happy resurrection resurrection to you y'all my God today thank God that he got up again thank God that he raised again thank God that he's no longer dead because when you see the nail scars there's something else about the nail scars what I'm seeing in the text is that the nail scars are actually the proof of his past but because it's a scar it means that he's been healed and is there anybody in this room today that can give God give God a praise for all the stuff that you went through is there anybody that can give God a praise all the hail that you caught yesterday all the hail that you caught last week all the hail that you caught in your childhood when you look at when you look at the nail scars it represents that I'm healed and is there anybody that can give God a praise in this room thank God today that he lived I'm going to keep on saying it until you grasp it thank God that he lived thank God that while he hung bled and died one Friday evening that's not how the story ends he got up he got up again now let the redeem of the Lord open up your mouth and praise this is resurrection Sunday I said let the redeem of the Lord Open up your mouth and praise. I'm sorry, neighbor, but I'm healed. When I think about the nail scars, I'm healed. I'm healed from the abuse. I'm healed from the distraction. I'm healed from the disappointment. I'm healed for everything that was not good for me. I'm healed from it because Jesus took care of it at the cross and now I can live because he got up again. This is why we worship him. This is why we don't worship anything else or anyone else. Because nobody else took nails in their hands for us. I want to submit this to you while you are where you are. Wherever you are in your faith. I want to submit this to you. That Jesus didn't die for perfect people. He didn't die for perfect people. He died for imperfect people. Jesus didn't get up for perfect people. He got up for imperfect people. And guess what? I was in that number. That's the Me Too movement. I was in that number. That regardless of my shortcomings, it's his power to have resurrected 
that took care of all of my debt. Can I talk to somebody with bad credit? Look, ain't no Me Too's coming out there. Wouldn't it be amazing for someone to come along and look at your credit score and say, you know what? I'm going to take care of all your debt. Anybody got student loans? I'm going to take care of all your debt. Think about how the government is trying to block the bill to forgive student loans. Think about that now. How the legality of the matter, the law, is attempting to block the cancellation of debt in our time. Can you imagine what it was like for Jesus' ministry? Because his ministry represented the cancellation of sin debt. And the legality of the Pharisaic nature was to prevent this from happening. But they forgot to read their Bible. Because he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Tear this temple down in three days. I'll build it again. Thank God today that he lives. I'm done invitation if you're in this place and you haven't given Jesus your life you haven't allowed him into your life and you feel like you know what I, I really need to go ahead and receive him while the praise team minister this last song come on up there while they minister this last song if you feel the spirit pushing you to give Jesus a yes I want, you to, I want you to move as the Spirit is giving you guidance. And I want you to listen to the words of this song. And if that's you out there singing, if you want to receive salvation today on Easter Sunday, all you got to do is stand where you are. Come on, y'all. Wherever you are. Think about what it did. Wherever you are, I would have lost it all. Think about what he's saying. But now I see how you were there for me. And I can say, never would have made it. No, I never would have made it. Never would have made it without you. Think about it. They were sad because they thought Jesus had left them. Sing, Jerry. Come on, family. Come on, family.
family. Come on, family. Come on, family. Come on, family. Come on, family. Watch God move when his word is lifted. Come on, we thank God for four who came today. We thank God for the four who come today. New J, God is doing something. I said God is, the New J ought to be clapping it. I said God is doing something. We will be obedient. Thank God, family, for you joining with us today. Amen. We will connect with you and partner with you as we do the work of the Lord here in this city and this community, bringing the gospel to people. Here's what we believe. We believe in empowering people, equipping disciples, and engaging community. That's what we're about. That's what we're about. We believe that the church is outside of the walls. The work is outside of the walls. We meet here to encourage one another and to fellowship, to let everyone know that you're not by yourself in the faith journey. Come on, let's give God praise for those who joined today. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. It's offering time in the sanctuary. Amen. They're like, why y'all shouting? Because it's offering time. It's because God loves a cheerful giver. That's why we shout and we thank God. Everything that we have, God is our source. Everything else is a resource. The money that you got is a resource. Your car, your house, your clothes, your job is a resource. God is the source. Amen. If you need an envelope, please lift your hand. If you need an envelope, please lift your hand. If you want to be able to give today. If you want to give electronically today, you can. The instructions are on the screen. Amen. All right, I want y'all to listen closely. Here's what we're going to do. I promise you we're almost done. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask everyone on this side to stand. Even if you're giving electronically, I don't want nobody to have to crawl over you today. They got on their good clothes. Amen. Everyone on this side, please stand. Everyone on this side, please stand. Amen. Greeters and deacons, you can help me out in the back. You're going to start from the back and make your way forward to give here. Everyone standing, you're going to start from the back, make your way forward to give here. Everyone standing so no one have to climb over you. If you're giving electronically, just bring your phone and tap the basket. Amen. I can count you in the number. Amen. All right. All right. Let's go. Y'all been to church before. He got us.
All right, everyone in the middle section. Starting from the back, everyone in the middle section, starting from the back. Amen. If you're on this side, come on and come this way. Everyone on this side, come this way. If you're on this side, you start from the back and come this way. Thank you all for your gifts and your generosity. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for the gifts that were given today, the tithe, the offering. Now, God, we ask you to bless it, Lord God, as you see fit. Bless those who gave. Bless those who didn't have anything to give, but they desire to give. We give you praise for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we're getting ready to go. Just a few announcements. First of all, all your children, amen, all your children are over in Children's Church, but they're going to be released. They're having an Easter egg hunt, so stay around, fellowship. I know you got to go, but just stay around a little bit in fellowship. Also, this Wednesday, we will have Bible study back on Zoom this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. We got our Refill Women's Conference coming up April 29th. Amen. Please take a flyer if you don't know anything about that. Also, it's Autism Awareness Month. We're bringing awareness. We'll have more information on that as the month goes on. And Compassion Sunday is April 30th. Ministry elections are coming up, so ministry leaders, please make sure um, that you're communicating your ministry elections. Listen, I need leaders that's going to serve with me, that's going to be visionaries, that's going to catch the vision and run. All right? So all of you that's in ministry, you got to make sure that leadership is for you, all right? If you don't lead nowhere else, don't try and come to the church and lead, all right? Understand, we have to go with leaders. We need leaders. We need people who are bold, who are courageous, but who are also compassionate to lead and make tough decisions, y'all. If we're going to go to where God is taking us, I need your help, which means I need ministry leaders that can be vision catchers. So wherever I throw the ball, I need you to catch it and keep running. Amen? Can y'all say amen? Because they did. All right, they did. All right, I got a few. Amen. All right, we're getting ready to go. Let us all stand. Thank you, guests. Thank you. If it's your first time here, please come see us again. We appreciate you sharing on Easter with us. Father, in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for another day. This was Resurrection Sunday. It's going to continue to be Resurrection Sunday. So, God, as we leave this worship atmosphere in this building, we're going to stay in worship with you throughout the rest of this day, Lord God, and this week and forevermore, Lord God, because we thank you for what Jesus did for us. Now, God, as we leave this place, lead us and guide us in the path that you will have us to go. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, may his grace and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit may it rest, may it rule, may it abide, and people henceforth, now and and forevermore, let it be hard. Say amen. On your way out, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it was him. <laughs>